this tips video we're going to go through how to create offset alignments and then use them to help control the way our corridors work. A quick tour of what we have in this drawing is a basic center line alignment. We have created a corridor from set alignment. Of course in order to have the corridor we have a profile and we have an assembly. The assembly consists of two lanes, a shoulder, and a tie slope. Let's pretend that we have designed this roadway at standard 12 foot lanes and the client has came back and decided that a portion of the project needs to be widened to 18 foot lanes in order to account for some industrial traffic and DOT or other regulatory bodies came back and told us that they want us to add a right hand turn lane. There's more than one way to handle transitions and we're going to talk about how to use offset alignments and then the power that they give us for doing this. <coughs> So we want to begin our transition at, or our 18 foot lanes after station 500 and we're going to add a right hand turn lane. So let's quickly create our offset alignments. That's easy to do. You select the center line alignment and the contextual ribbon has the offset alignment box. You click it and in here you'll have the parent already selected. You can name it however you wish. I have it set with the parent name and then the side. You can do numbers of offsets. I'm just going to do one and I'm going to do them at our 12 feet that we already have to left and right. I'm going to leave it on offset alignments and I want no labels and I'm going to hit OK. Once that's done the offset labels are created, alignments are created as you can see over here. Now the power of offset alignments are that they are tied to the parent alignment. So any changes to the parent alignment I make will be reflected in those offsets. So if I come over here and I move this endpoint, for example, if I can grab it and pull it down, notice that the offset alignment's moved with it. So that's one of the strengths of offset alignments. I'm going to control Z to get that back to where it was. Now that I have those, let's add our widenings. I like to do the first widening a different way than I may do some subsequentials. I'm going to select the offset alignment. And with it selected, I'm going to come up here and hit Add Widening. And I'll begin a series of command prompts. I have the option to create a new alignment if I want to, but I'm not going to. With my dynamic input button checked, I can keystroke in a starting station, or I could click on screen. So I'm going to stay station 500. And um, I accidentally put 50 there. And hit Enter twice. So let's try that again. Let's Control Z. Select the alignment, go to widening, no, station 500, hit enter, end station. I'm going to go all the way to the end of the project, choose that point, and I want to know the offset. Now the offset is from the center line alignment, the parent alignment, so I'm going to say 18, and hit enter. Once you do that, Pull this over so maybe you can see. You can see this alignment here that it added it. As I click each one of these, notice that I was to the left on that alignment, so the offset is negative. If I choose each one, you'll see that on my screen some different things are being highlighted. I can change the transition, so I want to change that to linear, and I could change the length here if I wanted to to 50 feet. And if I click somewhere else, you'll see that it updated it. So I'm going to change that back to 100. And for the moment, I'm just going to close this out. Now that it's done, if I select the offset alignment, you'll see a series of grips. I can move these grips around. And you'll see that it's dynamically changing the offset alignment as well. So when I keystroked in that transition it moved it. I want to begin my widening at 500 so I'm going to pull that over to 500 and I want the transition to be 100 feet long so I'm going to end the transition grip at, at right here. I could also come over here and if I wanted to change the width I can drag it in and out. You can see my key in there but I'm going to leave it alone. <coughs> Let's repeat that for the right hand side, so very quickly, and the widening, no, station 500, 
end station. Linear and close the dialog box. Come over here to station 500, do the same thing. I'm going to move the end station, the end transition to 600. And because I drug that in, it automatically pulled the beginning to 500. So you can see here that I have, it's getting a little busy to see, but these alignments here are the widenings. And let's just leave it at that. Now, remember, I had a corridor already built. So let's come over here and let's go into our corridor. Let's come over to our targets. And the previous one had no targets for widening, but now I can. So let's choose our left width target. Let's choose our left and add it. And let's do our same thing for our right. Hit OK, OK, and OK. It's going to rebuild the corridor. And you notice that it automatically widened the corridor. So let's do that one more time. Let's come over here and say that we want our um, right-hand turn lane to have 100 foot of storage, and we want a 50 foot taper. So let's choose this offset alignment. And this time, let's do it graphically. I'm, with it selected, you'll see this plus icon. I'm going to hit plus to begin a new widening. And now that that's done, I'm going to pull this over here to, we said, 100 foot, right, with 50 foot widening. So I'm going to put this at station 1561 and hit enter. And watched it move it. I'm going to grab, grab this grip and because of that I can now move these. I'm going to, if I can get it to cooperate y'all. I'm going to pull that and I said that was 1561 and now notice that it's put in station. I, instead of doing the math I'm going to hit the tab key to move to this length. Now you can see the length is in here and I'm going to put 50 foot length and put enter. And there's that transition. So I just added a turn lane. I'm going to, and it, because I had the corridor set to automatically rebuild, it automatically rebuilt that. Let's select this corridor here. And with the corridor selected, if I can, whoops, choose the corridor, I'm going to come down here to my corridor plot. Actually, let's go to, um, corridor basic so I can see my template drops. Notice that it added a template drop at every one of these transition points. That's important to understand. So it automatically did that so that it would push them. With it selected I'm going to go to my object viewer and zoom in over here tilt it up a little so you can see it and pan around and you can see that it widened it automatically. And because it was tied to a corridor, all of this is automatically done. And I didn't play with any of the slopes, so this is maintaining that 2% cross slope that I had. And that's basically it for widening using an offset alignment. I can make this as complicated or as simple as I want. It is dynamic. And that's that.